All right, so now we're going to see how to set up a vise in the Tormox. Uh, we have already started up the mill. We have um, reset it. We have referenced the Z, the Y, and the X axes. We have an empty uh, set screw holder in the collet right now, and our table is blank. So what I want to do first is I'm going to, going to spray it down with a little WD-40, not a lot, just kind of a mist over everything. Just on the table there. Then I'm going to take a millstone. This millstone has a coarse side and a fine side. We don't need to use the coarse side, just the fine side. And all we're going to do is go in little swirls here and there. We want to cover the entire area and we're doing this so that we knock down any little nicks or burrs. We're not trying to grind away our uh, table. We're just trying to knock down any nicks or burrs and that's enough. So I'm going to put this away. I'm going to wipe it down with a clean paper towel. Be sure to get all of that grinding residue off of there. You can see there's a bunch of um, little metal that uh, came off with that. Next step, if we're going to be putting the vise in here, we need to put some T-nuts into the center um, slots in our table. So I'm going to put it in each side and slide it towards the middle. <clears throat> now I'm going to put the vise in here. The vise is really heavy. you got to be careful when you lift it. Set it down gently on the table. Slide it into position where you want it. I want these notches. There's one on each side. I want them above the center slot. Now that I've gotten that nut in there, now I'm going to be putting the bolt in there. And this particular bolt needs two washers so it doesn't uh, bottom out when you go to tighten it. So I'm going to put it over that T-nut. Oh, actually, you could probably get by with just one. So now that is just loosely snug down there not very tight at all and what I want to do now is I'm going to be installing um, a dial not a dial indicator a test indicator this is a test indicator it has this little touch probe on the very end you can see that needle move when I just barely touch it it has this arm that goes into a collet holder so I'm going to put this in when I go to do that I'm going to push the clamp to release button which is on the side here of the automatic tool changer I'm going to push and hold that you never want to close the collet with nothing in there so I'm going to push the button and release and then I'm going to put my test indicator in there and now that's in place Now I'm going to use the jog shuttle to move the vise and the whole table to be near our uh, test indicator. I'm going to lower it down and I'm going to be moving that back to where it just comes into contact here with our vise. And what will happen is this can rotate some. And I want to sweep it across the back of the vise, this jaw back here. So I need to actually lower it down just a touch. I'm actually going to move it over in the X direction just a little bit. And 
what that's going to do is that's going to allow me. Oh, you saw the needle move there. I want to find. Oh, yep. See if I sweep it, it'll actually touch. So it's kind of moving in a little bit of an arc. So I want to find right where it just touches that edge. So I'm moving this table to where it's just off the edge of this dial indicator. And you can see it just touches it. It looks like my maximum here occurs somewhere around here. That's when it is pushing the hardest on that little touch probe. So right about where it says six right there. So I'm going to actually take my dial indicator and I'm going to rotate it there. So I can have it near zero because zero is easier to remember. One, two. Top off at zero. I'm just sweeping it back and forth. I'm really close to that. It's at about one right now. Ooh, that looks pretty good to me right there. Okay. So if I leave that right at zero, now if I jog in the X direction, it will tell me, see how it's moving? That tells me that back jaw is not parallel to the axis of travel. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back where I started and I'm going to give it a little knock there. Let's see if that helped it steady some. Certainly did not. All right, we're going to keep playing with this. <laughs> okay, let's see where we're at. On our left hand side, you can see our test indicator is at zero and I can actually sweep here and you see it at its maximum as that goes through its arc it's at zero now I'm gonna jog in the left or in the X direction rather to the other side and you'll see that needle move the entire way it's not moving much you have to understand that is a grand total of about ten thousandths maybe eleven thousandths of an inch once we get over here we get to the other side and it's eleven thousandths difference so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to see if I knock that it starts decreasing well half of eleven thousandths is about six or so so let's see if that just straighten it out does it stay the same as we sweep all the way across this side and it's just below the zero so I bet that's it right there I would say that's pretty darn good so what we need to do now is we need to tighten it problem is as we tighten that that will flex it a little bit and that measurement might change so we need to double check it again maybe make some more adjustments as we go okay let's see how to tighten them this one uh, takes a three quarter inch wrench and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just snug it a little bit not much at all on one side and then the other just a little bit and if you watch that test indicator it might change just a little bit as I'm tightening these going back and forth back and forth now what I want to do is move across that back jaw again still jogging back and forth in the X direction 
and it looks like it did move about a thousandth of an inch. Um, so what I could do is I can loosen these just a touch and maybe give it a little tap tap with the wrench before trying to tighten it down one more time. It's a tedious process, but all of your precision is grounded in the idea that your vise is going to be parallel with the travel of the machine. So right there, the back jaw of the vise looks to be dead on. The needle just barely moves a teeny tiny bit, but it looks pretty darn good to me. So that's how you dial in a vise. Um, and uh, that's how we tighten it down. That's how we uh, sweep back and forth with a test indicator to make sure that it's nice and straight.